Hello and welcome to the first episode of Ultimate JavaScript Tutorials. Today we are going to be learning about Angular and Angular Material, and specifically we'll be learning about how to add hover styling to buttons in Angular Material. I will use pretty typical CSS to do it one way, and then I will use Angular variables and attributes to add styling, hover styling as well. And then finally, I will use an Angular Material theme. So three different ways. I'll also, just for a bonus, add focus hover styling because it's pretty easy to add in there. So um, we'll dig into the DOM. You can see some of these classes that are applied by Angular Material. So some pretty cool stuff to learn about. We can figure out what selectors to use for uh, CSS styling or for theme styling. So a lot of great stuff in here. I'm very excited to be starting this new channel, and it's going to focus on Angular material, at least for the first ha handful of videos. I already have a React channel where I dig deep into material UI for React, so pretty excited to be approaching it from the Angular side now, that material design philosophy. Um, so as usual with my videos, then I have quite a bit of starter code in place. What we've got so far is I've got the files set up uh, for this Angular button, and there's really nothing to it yet, though. So really right now we just have a button that is a default HTML button. So pretty quickly we can add this matte raised button attribute on here. And so that will give us an Angular material button as easy as that. So we can see that there's some default styling. But the thing that is going to be most useful is that we can dig into the DOM and we can see that there are classes applied. So typical... Um, component library method for creating these components, and I'm doing air quotes even though you can't see it, is that they'll take an HTML element and some classes, and that combination is what actually creates these components. So in our code, we think of them as components, but in the DOM, they're really just an element with some styling, just like anything else has to be in the DOM. So we see a couple of classes like MDC button raised, Matt MDC raised button, etc. So we can use those for styling this button. And the first method that I'm going to use is just this very typical um, CSS method of styling these. So I'm going to add hover styling, of course. What I'm going to target is the Matt MDC raised button class that we just saw. And I'll just give it some hover styling. So we could see that there was a small change in the hover styling um, in the in our app with just this matte raised button attribute. There's already a little bit of styling that gets applied on hover. So we are going to basically just override that with whatever we want. So I'm going to say background color of orange for this um, this hover styling. So simple as that. Let's go over here and see. It's going to refresh on its own. And there we go. Pretty cool thing that it is just that simple. Um, I really like to use existing classes that are applied in order to do this styling. Let's go back to our code. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this. And instead of the hover selector, then we will use the focus selector. So these are, um, these are pseudo classes here that we are using. And let's change that from orange to a green color. And let's add a few more things. Let's say font size of 1.25 rim. And um, let's say color. So this is really text color. We'll say, we'll just give it a gray color here. So with that, let's go back to our app and see what happens on hover. I mean, ex excuse me, on focus. So I'm going to press the tab button to focus that so that we don't have any um, hover interaction first. And so we can see that, in fact, uh, this is getting some styling. So I'm going to click out. Another way that we could have looked at that is if we go into DevTools over here. I like to deep, keep DevTools open on these videos because there's a lot of useful information. So we can force element state of hover and focus and we can see those different stylings. So I do want to mention that I have a link in the video details to an article that has all the code that I'm showing off here. So if you want to be able to copy, the, copy and paste the code or just take it at your own pace with reading the article, um, it's all the same material and uh, you can you can learn the material in that way as well. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to show you uh, kind of a more angular specific methodology of styling the uh, the button on hover. So what we're going to do here is I'm over here in the hover button 
uh, JavaScript file, or really it's a TypeScript file because it's got that TS ending, but we're in JavaScript world now. So what I'm going to do is I am going to give it a variable of named color, and I'm going to use the primary color. So I set this app up using um, Angular prompts you with a couple of, or Angular material, I should say, prompts you with a couple of different default themes. And so they all have like a primary color, a worn color, an accent color. So I'm going to take, uh, I'm going to make use of the primary color and just set the color variable equal to that primary color. Now what we need to do is go into our HTML file and actually use that color class. So um, what I'm going to say is, of course, I've got to do a little bit of setup. Um, so I'm saying that color, it's equal to that color variable we set. So now the variable is available over here in our HTML file as well. And I am going to say um, on, let's say, mouse over. Then I will say color is equal to, uh, let's set it equal to our accent color. Like I said, there's a default theme that's incorporated in the app because when I did, when I created the app, then um, I just followed very typical Angular documentation, Angular material documentation. And um, I just took, I think the purple and green, if I remember right, uh, default theme. So we've got our mouse over. Now we also need our mouse out if we're kind of simulating a hover effect here. Once again, I'm going to use that color variable that we've got access to. And on mouse out, I am going to set my value back to primary because of course, when we hover over something, we want it to do a thing. We want the styling to be updated. When we hover out, we want the styling to revert. So that's what I've got going on here. So now we have a primary color set on our button and um, we can see that when we hover, we still have that orange color that we were getting from our CSS file. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to comment this out so that we make sure that there's no interference from what we did previously because we wanna just see the variable methodology here. So now when I hover, it might be a little hard to tell on video, but it's actually kind of a lighter, maybe a tan color now. So our CSS method gave it an orange color, but now we are giving it um, kind of a tan color, the default accent color um, from the theme that I selected when I created this app. So that is the um, variable and attribute methodology of applying some hover. Now let's do one more thing and um, use a theme, create a theme here first, and like a custom theme, I would say, um, that is going to wrap our button, and normally it'd wrap a whole bunch of components. You'd create a theme so that a bunch of components receive that theme, and let's say all buttons that are um, receiving that theme can behave the same way. Of course, this is just a tutorial in a video, so I'm only going to have um, a div that will wrap my button, and that div will receive a class here that um, has access to that theme. So let's make that happen. So the first thing that we're going to do is I've actually already got this import here um, or this use here with um, pulling in Angular material. And so the name of it is just a short name, Matt. You'll see that pretty commonly. Um, so what I'm going to do then is I am going to create some new color values. And so I will say custom primary and I'll say matt.define palette and inside of here I'm gonna say matte dot and we'll say blue gray palette a 200 a 100 and a 400 and let's do something similar for our accent so those are the two colors that we're focusing on from our themes. Obviously, I've already used primary. I've already used accent. Um, so here, what we're going to do is, um, and I've got a typo in here. That's not what we want. One L, two Ts in palette. I always get that wrong. So now, instead of blue-gray palette, I'll use the pink palette. And here, I will say, let's say, 700, 500. And 900. So what I'm doing is I'm creating some custom colors. I am extracting some values from these different palettes and creating some custom colors here. And um, 
now we can use these custom colors in our custom theme. So let's say custom theme and we'll say mat.define dash light dash theme. So defining a new theme here and inside of here I'm going to say that color is uh, we're setting up a new primary in our palette and we're going to give it a value of that custom primary and then we'll say accent and we'll give it a value of our new custom accent. Okay, we're almost done here. One more thing I want to do is I want to create a class. And this class is going to have access to that theme we just created. So almost done here. One more thing I'm going to do. We've pretty much got our theme set up. However, there's actually something that I'm going to show you in the code and we'll add down here. But first we can take a look at all of this, make sure it's all working fine. So let's go back to our button here and um, let's give it a refresh. Make, oh, one more thing we need to do, of course, before we'll see our code changes. Let's go to our custom theme and make sure that our button has access to it. Can't forget that step like I almost did. So we're going to say here that the class on this equals that custom theme that we just set up. And let's finish our div here. And I'm going to go down here. Now we should see these changes here. Okay, so like I said, we had changed our, our primary color, and so we can see that it is no longer purple. And we changed our accent color, so we can see that it's no longer that tan color when we hover over. Instead, it's kind of this pinkish color. And so I just really kind of generated some random colors here. But we can see that there's a significant difference in what was showing. So the next thing that I want to show you, um, we've changed styling on hover for quite a few things. We've done it for background color. And on the focus, I did it for the font size and the text color as well. But one thing that I want to do is I actually want to um, change the the box shadow on this. And so that's something that I think it's a pretty common ask in the styling world is to be able to change the background color. So what we can do is we can go down and see if we can find the background color on here and then we can change that color. So I'm going to change it in a slightly different way. I'm going to use the theme, um, but instead of just like um, kind of uh, ignoring the fact that there's a lot of variables and values already present in that theme, I'm going to make use of one of them. So we can see the box shadow is set right here, and we can see that it uses this variable, this MDC protected button container elevation variable. So what I'm going to do is I am going to go in and actually just set a custom value on here. So this value, I don't know if DevTools will let me click in. Looks like it won't. Uh, this actually reminds me a lot of um, Bootstrap. If you've used Bootstrap 5, they have a lot of these variables. Um, I think they may also be referred to as tags, but um, you can actually set your theming using some of these variables and values. So kind of a different method of controlling the theme. So let's go into our code here, back over here to our custom theme, and I am going to add this value here, and um, or I'm going to update and customize this value here. So I'm going to say 6px and 6px and 2px and 1px, and then set an RGBA value. So there we go. So what I'm doing is I'm just making it stronger you'll be able to see quite a bit of difference. Um, some of these values are obviously the color value of it. Um, some of them are the offset of the uh, box shadow from the button. So let's go take a look at this now. So now we've got that custom box shadow on here. However, there's obviously a problem. I've got it applying when there is no hover, but I want it to apply when there is hover. So what the difference is, is just a little bit of difference in the class name. So I'm going to um, set, I'm going to force this hover state on here and let's see what the difference is. So Matt MDC raised button hover. Okay. So they're just using a pseudo selector there. Um, 
for the selector, but then inside of here, let's see, they've got MDC protected button hover container elevation. So let's compare that to what we have. We have MDC protected button container elevation. So apparently they have different variables for the non hover and the hover state. So now I'm gonna add hover in there and let's see how this goes. Okay, so it's refreshed, it's removed that hover state. And now when I hover, we've got the box shadow only on hover instead of only when there's no hover. So a pretty cool thing, you can make use of those existing variables. Um, that's kind of another side of theming that is interesting and it's, you really have to dive into dev tools to explore that side of theming. So pretty cool stuff though. Um, anyway, I hope that this video was helpful. This is a brand new channel. Please do su consider subscribing and definitely check out that article that um, is on my new site that's going with this channel. And uh, I really appreciate you watching this video.